Greetings, everybody. Greetings, and I'm hoping that you are doing well on this beautiful uh, Wednesday. So today we're going to be talking about the boule, the Masonic boule. So this is going to be very interesting. Well, this is going to be interesting. I, I, I would tell you that. So today we're going to be talking about the boule, that is true. So this is going to be very interesting. Well, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, I had to kill that 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 noise in the background. So, look, I know you're gonna be tuning in. So come on and come on in real quick, so we can have this conversation. It's definitely going to be interesting. I I I, I can definitely say that. Uh, you're going to really enjoy this conversation today. We we're talking about the Masonic boule. What is that like? I mean, I know you and I both have heard a lot about the boule, and I know there's been a lot of connections. And regarding the boule, but tonight we go. We need to have a definition of what is the boule. Where did this, this boule come from? A lot of people like to tie the boule into the Greek fraternity, five beta sigmas, the divine nine. That whole group of Greeks and sororities. People like to tie the boule into that because they consist of those who are very educated in the in in that atmosphere. But I'm going to take it a little step farther. I'm going to go somewhere else a little different with that when I talk about the boule tonight. So please come on in the chat. Let me know if you're on tonight. So we're going to, we're going to have this conversation and uh, get this get this going on. You know, um, this is this is going to be an interesting topic tonight. And I hope that um, you'll get something out of it as always, because I believe that when you speak of the boule, you should have actually absolutely give a de definition of what the boule is. And I've seen so much said about the boule, you know, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not adding the two up to me. I'm, I'm not bringing those two together. So when you talk about the Greek fraternities and the boule versus the definition of boule versus what the boule is supposed to be all out, be about, that is, I'm finding some discrepancies in that. So I just want to welcome everybody aboard as we kind of look into this thing we call the boule. Definitely welcome aboard, everyone. So I've seen so many others talk about the boule. Hold on just a second. Hey, Brother Simmons, what's going on, bro? Well, I was going to use your services, but however, that has been canceled. Give me about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to holler right back at you. All right, thanks. So. Um, as I was saying, when we consider the boule, what is the boule? You know, define it, bring it home, make it plain to a lot of people instead of just trying to tie the Masonic uh, into it along with the Greeks into it. Because I'm finding there are two separate ideas to what the boule is. That's what I'm finding. I can't speak about nobody else or anything like that, but that's what I'm finding. I don't know, I don't know much about the boule. Uh, to be candid with you. I appreciate that. I didn't either. I'm going to tell you, I didn't I didn't know a whole lot about the boule, but I've seen some videos that individuals have sent to me regarding the boule. And what I found is that a lot of people have tried to tie Freemasonry and to the boule. They'll try to tie the Greek fraternities into the boule. And I can see how it was done. I actually can see how it's done. And I understand it. I understand it. But to, to, to look at what it is, is something different. You know, that's, that's what I'm finding. Um, you know, because the boule has a different meaning when it comes to the Bible, okay? When you look at the boule in the Bible and what it really means, it's, it's different than what you would actually get. Uh, from anybody else. Let's just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to post something and I just want you to take a look at it for yourselves. And I need for you to tell me your thoughts about it, you know, really and sincerely, your thoughts about, you know, the boule and, and, and everything that comes along with it. Because what I'm finding, it ain't, it ain't all chopping up. That's just my opinion. It's just my opinion on it. So I'm going to share with you what I came across uh, in, in, in looking at the boule. And then you could tell me your thoughts about it. You know, I, I don't mind doing exactly that. 
I, I really don't. I think it's something that needs to be shared. I think it's something that would uh, definitely help a lot of us when we look at the boule and what the boule is supposed to be all about. That's just my honest opinion. Because what I found versus uh, what's out there is totally different. Uh, and, and that's where I'm at. Now, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. And if you see something, you'd be like, no, Brother Hawkins, I, I, I think there's a little bit more to it than that. I'm all ears. I'm, I'm willing to listen uh, to what you may have come across, what you, what you may see. I'm willing to definitely take a look at that and, and, and see it for myself. That's what I'm willing to do. Um, but I'm going to share with you what I came across as far as the boule is concerned. And then you can come back with it and let me know your thoughts. So I'm going to post it right here real quick in regards to what I came across. All right. So let's see. Let's see. All right. I, I think this should do it. All right. There you go. There you go right there. Tell me your thoughts. See, this is what I came across. All right. Uh, Greeks, it's a Greek noun, boule. It meant for purpose, design, decree, plan. This term denotes intentions. That is what I came across. All right. And there's something else. Let me see what else is out there that, that may be of interest to anyone else who's looking at this from that point of view in regards to uh, the boule, all right? Uh, let's see, I, mean, I think I got this here. Let's see what this is gonna give you right here. I'm gonna put something else out. I just wanna, I just wanna hear back because I've heard so much about the boule, you know? And I, I just wanna put it out and I, I need your thoughts to be honest, your opinion about what it is. Let's see. Let me see, I think I got this here. Hold on just a second. There's, a, there's another part I came across when it talks about the boule. There's something else. If any of you have an idea, maybe you know something I don't know, share that because I'm, I'm willing to listen because I, I want to know myself, you know? So now what I personally come across as far as the boule is concerned, uh, when you're talking about it, it is supposed to be those individuals, black individuals, they call booze, bourgeois individuals, uh, who are supposed to be gatekeepers. Now, that is what was brought to my attention. So when I started looking at that from that point of view, I can see how someone can say, OK, they are the boule because they are gatekeepers. Now, when you think about that, what does that look like in the Masonic world? Ask yourself, what does that look like in the Masonic world when you're talking about the boule? Because I'm going to answer that for myself, but I'm looking at it and I need other people input as far as what do you see as the boule when it comes to the Masonic, uh, uh, the Freemasons? What I mean, a lot of you are Masons and some of you are not. I get it. But my question is, is when you think of the boule, what picture comes to mind? You know, so it is elite amongst the elite. Okay, yes, it is. But what picture comes to mind when you think about the boule amongst black masons? What picture comes to mind? What do you think about it? I'm, I'm going to give my own point of view based on information I have, based on some things I've seen. And, and I'd like to just hear from those who are tuning in tonight in regards to the boule. That's where I'm at. I, I think because what happens is uh, when, when we think of the boule, uh, we look at it, oh, man, it, it's, it's so, it's, you know, it's, it's out there. It's really out there, you know. That's, that's you know, who, who made up the boule? You know, that's another one. That's another good one that you should take a look at. You know, who made up the boule? That's that's a <laughs> that's a new one. That's that's one you should actually take a look at, you know, stuff like that. Because I, I don't I don't see a lot of individuals or those who may be part of the Freemason diaspora 
coming forth saying anything about it. Politicians is another one. All right. Okay, I can kind of see that. I can kind of see politicians being part of that. Uh, yes, I can. I can see that. You know? So here's another one. Who made up the boule? Images results from what does the Greek word boule means? The boule, a senate, the atheists, the anthes, legislators, also included uh, deliberators of bodies known as the boule. When I think of the boule, I see educated power players in society. Okay. I can I can even get with that. I can get with that. Educated power players, you know, like that. Now, my question to, to many of you is that if the opportunity arise for you to be part of this so-called boule, uh, and I say so-called because I don't know all of the members and, and anything like that. I'm going on this based upon information I've come across, um, be it on the internet, be it YouTube, videos that were sent to me. I'm going on that. So don't shoot me, all right? So based on the information that I've come across, when talking about the boule, someone put in here, educated elite individuals. So what I'm looking at is what is educated elite individuals? Because you have uh, African-Americans uh, who are very highly educated. So would you consider them to be boule? Let's just say, for instance, you have a doctor or a lawyer or a politician who, who's part of the Greek fraternity would you consider them to be boule? I, I'm just asking, because I'm going to give my own opinion to this side in a minute when it comes to talking in regards to the Freemasons. I'm going to give that point of view. You know, greetings, everybody who's coming on. So tonight's topic is the Masonic boule. That's the topic for tonight. So I hope that you'll be able to get something out of this. And when we are done, I need for you to take a picture of what I'm talking about when I say the Masonic boule. Just for a moment, I won't call any names out, but you know, we we gonna, we gonna get down to it. Greetings everybody, fraternal gentlemen, greetings. I uh, appreciate that. Sea Breeze number one, how you doing? What's going on there, brother Williams? I appreciate you coming on in. Wishful master, how you doing? You know, uh, we, we gonna, Tony Hawkins is the boule. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I I I don't know if I run in that circle or not, but you know what? We'll soon find out one day or another. I I never really considered myself a boule or running in that type of circle. But however, you know, I'm I'm interested in finding out a little bit more about it. If anybody has any information in regards to the actual club boule, please hit me up. Please put it in the chat. Or if you want to be on and have the conversation, you're welcome to come on because I'm interested in it because I have my own opinion when it comes to the Masonic side of this thing we call boule. I have my own opinion about it, you know? So this is where I'm at because I believe that there's a lot more at play or at stake when you talk about the boule. Let me see. What's going on, Brother Muhammad? Yes, not everyone with the Masonic ties, those who are part of one of many fraternities. Okay, okay, all right, I can I can get with that, I can get with that. I'm just so interested in it, only because it's been coming up a lot. Personally, I consider uh, them belay anyone that's in a position to make an impact on society positive. Some people consider them to be black skulls and bones. I've heard of that. But I'm going to tell you where you're right, fraternal gentlemen. This is where you're right. You know, the boule is any group of individuals, group, hear me clearly, group of any individuals who are in positions to make an impact on society. That is the true definition and understanding of the boule. You can go look this up for yourself. I appreciate that, uh, fraternal gentlemen. Absolutely. Now, that's um, the boule for you. He put it right there for you. Now, I'm going to share this with you. The Masonic Boule. The Masonic Boule. What do you consider or whom do you consider to be the Masonic Boule? To those of you who be, to those of you who may be Masons or not be Masons, 
or even my sisters who are part of the order of the Eastern Star, who do you consider to be the Masonic Boule amongst the Freemasons? Who do you see in, in, in that role? Who do you see? You know, I mean, because there's a lot been happening Masonically that, is, that hadn't been talked about. So my question is, is who do you see as the Masonic Boule? That's my question to you tonight. All right, let's see who else we got up in here tonight. Greetings, everybody. A few just coming on. I want to welcome everybody to uh, this evening, uh, YT. We're talking about the Masonic Boule. And what we're trying to do is to uh, differentiate the Masonic body and those who may be part of the uh, group boule and get a better understanding of it. I know a lot of people put a, put together a lot of uh, different videos regarding the boule and who the boule is and 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 everything. I've heard of W D W E B Du Bois being a part of the boule. I've heard of, of of quite a few wealthy people who are part of the boule, but I mostly heard. Uh, Phi Beta Sigma being the boule per se. And I don't know how true any of these things are, but what is true is that the boule or that group of individuals, whomever it may be, that has a impact on society, be it political, be it religiously, whatever impact they have, it is definitely an impact on society. That is the definition I've definitely come across in regards to the boule. And I want to thank uh, brother, uh, uh, gentleman, uh, I think, yeah, fraternal gentleman for putting that in. That is what I've come across. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. Appreciate that super sticker. Looking to Sigma Phi, Sigma Phi Phi. All right. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I, I definitely have to do that and see. Now, is that a black Greek fraternity? You know, is that a black Greek fraternity? Fraternity. Any anybody? I'm I'm looking for help tonight. I'm asking because I don't know everything, but I know some things. So you know, I'm, I've I've even heard of Kappa being part of that. You know. Let's see. I've even heard of Kappa being part of that. Now, how true is how true is that? I don't know. Is Sigma Phi a big frat? I, I have no idea. I'm, I'm looking at, and, and studying this for myself tonight. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. I appreciate that information. Now, this is what I found based upon what someone just uh, put in. Let's see what we got here. This is what I've come across right here. This is what I just come across. So uh, Sigma Phi also known as the Boule, founded in 1904. Now, who is this particular uh, fraternity? All right. Are they part of the Divine Nine? You know, are they part of the Divine Nine? Because apparently, from what I know of, it says um, Alpha Phi Alpha, was, which was founded in 1906, you know, is supposed to be this oldest Greek fraternity amongst African-Americans. Now, how true is that? I don't know. Okay. But they saying Sigma Phi Sigma, also known as the Boule, founded in 1904, is the oldest fraternity for African-Americans among those named with the Greek letter. The fraternity does not have a colleague, a colleague chapter. And it's designed for professional and mid-career or older. Sigma Phi Phi was founded in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay, now we're getting a better understanding of the boule. Now we're getting a better understanding. Okay, all right, now we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. This is what I'm talking about. Let's look at it from that point of view, you know, because a lot of people like to tie it in together. But I'm just interested in it. Let's see what's going on, Brother Travis. How you doing? Uh, Brother Travis, I think you Greek. Are you Boule? I think you Greek. Brother Travis, come on. I think you Greek. You, <laughs> you know? 
You know, that's what I'm saying. I, th I think you agree. You know, I mean, I pledge Greek, but I don't I don't think I'm considered to be part of this boule. I have a decent job, uh, but I've never been part of something that can impact society as 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 far as the true definition of boule means. Do you are you telling me that uh Sigma Phi Phi has the 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 ability to impact the uh, African American society? A culture as we know it today is that is that what we're saying? Is that who the boule are? Those individuals who have who are very well off, uh, meeting and come together in secret in secrecy to 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 push an agenda and become the gatekeepers to those who become successful or not. Is that what we're looking at when we talk about the boule? Is that what we're trying to define? And is that's what it is? Because in a little while, as we go on with this topic tonight, I'm going to look at it from a Masonic point of view. I'm going directly at it from a Masonic point of view. But before I do that, I'm coming to you from a strictly boule. What is it? When was it organized? Who are they? Point of view. Many high level black executives are Sigma Phi Phi. Well, you know what? I can say the same thing about those who are Omega Sapphire. I know quite a few executives and individuals who are part of Omega Sapphire that they are in some pretty nice positions. You know, so are we? Are we seeing this as a divine nine situation, or is this just based based on because they are part of the Greek uh, fraternities? You know, is this a divine nine thing or is it a Greek fraternity thing with the divine nine? I, I don't know. But when I look at the divine nine and when I look at the definition of boule, it is a group of individuals who impact the society. But tonight we're talking about the African-American society. Do you believe that those executives, those who are part of the uh, fraternities, as far as the Greeks are concerned, have an influence on how uh, African Americans get to top positions. Do you believe that? Do you honestly believe that? Most people in Sigma Phi Sigma were Phi with Prince Hall Freemasonry. Oh, okay, all right. Mm, that's going to be interesting too because I'm a, I'm going I'm going to touch on that. You know. I'm a noble nowadays. Okay, noble. All right, noble. All right. But this is the thing we have to consider. You know, when we talk about the boule, because there's been so much put out there about who the boules are when it comes to African Americans. So my question is, who are the Masonic boules? Does the boule, as we know it, impact Black society, African American society? And if so, how do they Im impact this society that we call African-American society, our culture? How do the boule impact that? Do they really have a lock on allowing people to, to progress, you know, uh, upward? Do they really have that, that, that power to do that? that? That's another thing we got to look at, you know. This is where I'm at. Yes, with the Masonic connections. Oh, okay. So you're saying because of the Masonic connection, uh, guardian of secret knowledge, help me to understand this. You're saying because of the Masonic connection and uh, they have the ability to block those who are trying to move forward or progress in their career. Am I understanding that correctly? They impact society by showing, by slowing progress. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I would say it reaches across the fraternal organization as a Lambda man. I have seen the connections as I moved up in, a, in, a, in corporate America. Well, I would say this. If you are a part of any Greek fraternity or sororities for the sisters or Eastern stars or a part of the Freemasons, you're going to see the connections no matter how you move in this realm we call society. There's always going to be that connection. But what I'm looking at is a particular group of individuals 
who has the power or who has the, uh, uh, the, the structure to impact society. Because right now, I don't see Black Freemasons having that impact upon uh, the African-American society. I don't see the Greek fraternities having that type of impact upon the African-American uh, uh, society. I don't see that right now, but I can understand it, but I don't see it. So somebody needs to help me out. It all ties back to masonry. Okay, all right. We're going to see about that. <laughs> We're going to see about that. I would say that it reaches, okay, I read that one. All right, so, all right. So you know what? I mean, because if you are if you are a Freemason, as you uh, begin this journey, you're going to come across other Freemasons who are in various positions across the board. And because you are a Freemason, they may actually find favor in you, just as if you were in a Greek fraternity across the board. And because you have pledged, because you've gone through that journey, they may have found favor in you. So I get the connection. Don't get me wrong. I get the connection, but I'm trying to really nail it home, bring it home and say, okay, these are your boulets. Because we talk about it all. I mean, when I say we, I'm just saying from what I've seen on various videos that have been sent to me in regards to the boule, it's always out there. The boule. You know, those elites of the elite African-Americans who control, who moves up in society. No. So would you consider Denzel Washington to be a boule? Any of those actors or actresses who may have what you call made it, would they be considered boule? Gatekeepers, would you consider Kevin Hart to be a gate gatekeeper? Would you con consider anyone who's really made it per se, whatever you consider being making it is, a boule, someone who has the power or someone who has authority to open and close a door. Do you consider them to be part of the boule? Do you think they could be behind the scenes like a hidden hand in our community? They only slightly expose themselves to us. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Because I have a different opinion in regards to the boule. I have a different opinion in regards to uh, what some say the black skull and bones. I, I, I see it kind of differently. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But right now, I just need to have your opinion in regards to who the boules may be and, and how they're going to uh, and how they connect. That's where I'm at. That's what I'm looking for. That's my whole thing. And I believe if I can if, if I can put that together, I believe I have a better uh, understanding. Pardon my thumb. <laughs> What's up? You know, so that's that's where I'm at. Oh, wait. Hold on just a second. Oh, OK, OK, OK. All right. Yeah, so that's where I'm at. Let's see what we got up in this joint. Okay, well, contemporary hip hop artists, media persons, be modern day boule. They know better, but still com uh, confuse or, yeah, confusion. Yo, keep the masses mm, stagnant. Huh. I think an individual has the ability to, to progress forward in their life. I, I just think you have that ability to do it if you choose to do it. I'm never going to say you don't need help. I didn't say that. I said that you just have the ability to do it. Everybody need a little help in life to progress. Everyone. Nobody gets any place in this country or in the world by themselves. No one. Absolutely nobody. Whether your parents have left you a, 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 an estate or rather an inheritance of some sort, or maybe someone's seen something in you, but somebody has always given someone a helping hand in order for them to be considered or successful. You know, everybody need a little help along the way. Uh, maybe Jay-Z, maybe Jay-Z 
Anybody else got any other names they want to toss out there tonight? Because this is very interesting when you consider and talk about the boule. It's very interesting when you talk about who they could be, but are they? You know, are the Jay Z's and are the Drakes are bo are, are boules? Are they? They have a they have some perceived power to to open doors and to create millionaires or can, or to create those who can be well off. So would they be considered to be boule? You know, with someone like Michael Jackson who's gone, with someone like Prince, or with someone like uh, uh, members of various different groups, would they be considered boule? Because they have that power or that authority or in positions to open and close doors. Make me also think about the principals who allow their schools to fall, to fail rather, would be boule. Politicians who just get money, but don't positively impact the community, boule. Pastors and teachers lies, boule. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, I kind of like that. I, I like that, but that's an individual thing. Not all pastors do that. Is there a group of ministers that you may know of who, who come and meet in secret and say, okay, these are the things we're going to do? Would they be considered boule? You know, there is a there is a book called Our Our Kind of People Inside American Black Upper Class 1999. OK, I have to check that one out. I appreciate you showing and sharing that with me. Pebbles, he mentioned Boule. OK, all right. I'm going to look that book up and see exactly you know, uh, because there's like so much information out there regarding the boule until you really, the waters are mudded, mudded. You know, it's, it's a lot of mud. It's, you can't really put your hands on it. But a lot of people believe and a lot of people can say, hey, the boule is doing this. Just because of what's, what's taking place, you know. But as I said earlier, for me, when I look at the boule and, and, and what I found in regards to the boule, it is the need to be seated at the table. Listen, listen clearly, because fraternal gentleman put something out. Uh, he just posted something earlier. What I'm finding in a, amongst the African American diaspora. Those who are elitists of the elite, billionaires, millionaires, whatever class you want to put, the need to be at the table, okay? And what table is that? What table is there a need to be at when you think of the boule? What table is that? Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, okay? All right. So my question is, what is when I say the need to be at the table? What table is there a need to be at when you think of the when you think of the boule? What table do you what table do you see? Because when I'm in in a few minutes, I'm gonna change this topic and go in a different direction. I'm gonna change it and go in a different direction. You know. Greetings, the round table. So what is this round table? When, when I talk about the table and the need to be at the table, whose table are we talking about? Are we talking about the African-American table that we can build for ourselves? Are we talking about that table? Or, or what table are we talking about? Because the boule seems to be those of the elite who sit at this table and because of the slight of the hands, they, 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 they are in position to do certain things and some choose to do, some choose not to do it. Look up the link in the boule for women. Okay, I would certainly do that. I would certainly do that. Because I'm interested, man. I, I, I've gotten so much information till I'm like, come on now. Somebody got to have something out there for me when you're talking about the boule. Somebody got to come back with something because I'm, I mean, hey, 
if you don't go look for it yourself, you know, you something else may come up, you know. That's my thing. And this is where I'm at tonight. Let's see what they're going to say. All right. Sigma Phi Sigma, also known as the Boule. Okay, I got that part. Founded in 1904. Okay, I got that part. They've been around for hmm, 118 years, they're about. Okay. They tell me where their headquarters is at. So that is, so what I'm finding is that Sigma Phi Sigma, I mean, not Sigma Phi Sigma, I apologize. Sigma, yes, yeah, Sigma Phi Phi is considered to be the Boule that fraternal organization. They have a membership of 5,000 with 139 chapters. That's that's what I'm finding. That's that's what I'm seeing. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. All right, now, so what I'm also finding is, as I mentioned earlier, W.E.B. W -E -B du Bois is a member. Julius Albert, Andrew Young, okay, um, who else? Uh, Ken Blackwood, Eric Holden, um, let's see, Ron Brown, Vernon Jackson, Vernon Jackson, him? Okay, Arthur Ash, oh my goodness. Okay, let's see, John Baxter Taylor Jr. Okay, Jack, uh, Jack Greenberg, Thurgood Marshall, so all of these individuals I just named, Martin Luther King. Oh, that's interesting. So all of these individuals I just named are considered to be part of the boule. Okay, that's that's what I've come across. That's what I've come across. I actually did an audio for an event and witnessed prayers and oath and the type of women around them were definitely stories of Trump's amongst black women. Hmm. Okay, all right. Brother Hawkins, I think you are right with that list. Okay, okay. Those are the ones I've come across, you know, as far as being part of the boule, the Sigma Phi Phi. That is Sigma, that's P, P I, P H I. Okay, that is that fraternity. So I'm believing that when you say that, that we're considering those who are in various uh, positions. They're not elite positions, but they're considered uh, black leaders. Am, am I understanding that correctly? Are we seeing that a lot of black leaders are part of what we call now the boule? And if so, what table that what what is the table that they want to set at? Because it seems to me that they can create their own table, or they may have done that. You know. But you mean to tell me that all of those individuals are fighting against the progress of African Americans? I mean, because this is, I mean, uh, when I hear about the boule, it seems like it's something negative all the time. So when I've read off some of those names, I'm like, wow. So you mean to tell me Thurgood Marshall was against the progress of, of, of African Americans, Martin Luther King, um, just to name those two that really stood out to me, you know? Um, help me out, somebody. I mean, I'm just looking to see when I think of the boule and how people perceive them to be as gatekeepers. You're saying those individuals that I just named a little while ago are part of the boule and they slow the progression or the progress, the progression of black people. You know, previous link about organization. Okay. All right, I'm 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 asking because I want to know, you know. So when I think of someone like uh, an Andrew Young, you know, Andrew Young, uh, an American politician, diplomat, activist, okay, who began oh he began his year he began his career as a pastor too, you know. Uh, Young was early leader in the civil rights movement, serving as a uh, as a, uh, executive director of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. So, uh, uh, and he was a confidant uh, to Martin Luther King. I mean, you know, so when I see someone like that, so when I see someone like Dr. J. Uh, Keith uh, Moulton or Milton, something like that, you know, very active doctor out of Boston, you know, 
uh, his name is somewhere listed as a boule, if I'm not mistaken. So when you see these individual names pop up, it, it really makes you think. But, you know, Arthur Ashe is a member of the boule, but he was also a member of Kappa. That's that. Uh, Kappa, yeah, yeah, he was a Kappa. But he was also a member of the boule. That is something interesting. You know, do, do they have dual membership? <laughs> I'm just asking. I don't know. Do they have dual membership? You know, Martin may have been been brought integrity, black people into a. Oh yeah, I can show that. Show that. Hmm. Yeah, he did say that. He actually showed that. You know, you see, a lot of Christian groups were. Oh. Tutored and groomed. Okay, okay. Now that's an interesting comment right there. That's that's interesting based upon the information you've just shared with me. That is interesting, you know, and seeing that. Let's see what else we got here. They do have dual membership. Okay, see, I knew nothing about that. So I'm glad you own fraternal gentlemen. You can enlighten me on some things. I had no clue. So I'm just asking. In regards to that, and you just broke it down. You said, yeah, they got that dual membership thing going on. All right, let's see who else uh, could be in this thing we call uh, uh, the boule. Let's see. Um, Joseph Williams. He was a retired. Um, he was a member of uh, the boule. Oh, you right about the dual membership thing, huh? Okay, because he was an iota. That's That's interesting. You know, that is interesting that they can have dual membership. So when we, so now this goes back to the to the question in regards to the boule because we're seeing, based upon stuff I'm looking at and stuff I've come across, that these individuals, although are considered African American leaders within the community, when we consider them to be elite per se, but do you think they meet? in secrecy to decide whether they're going to be involved in the progression of Black people or the digression of Black people? What, what are your thoughts? Because it, that is, the people I've named, man, they make you think. It's like, really, you do I really believe that these people don't have my best interest? It's something to really, really think about. It is it is just that deep. Mm. It's something that you really got to just uh, 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 bring together and take a hard look at. Oh, really? Steve Coakley presented the boule is Sigma Phi, Phi, the symbols. Yep, that is true. And their names he could have said. He should have, yes, <laughs> yeah, muted and protected. Uh, protector of the king. Okay, okay. Hit the like button. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Tell them to hit that like button. Sometimes I feel like Prince Hall Masons of the day may be boule. Okay, you open that door. You open that door. I didn't open that door. You open that door. I didn't bring that up. You brought that up. Now, let me let me hit you with this. Okay, let, let me hit you with this real quick, like, because I got to go take care of some little stuff. You open that door, you know, and I'm going to tell you why what you just said really, really can, can, can have some validity to it. Let me tell you why. Because here's what I know versus what I don't know. I'm telling you what I know. All right. You can do your own research, but I'm telling you what I know. All right. Here's what I know. Anytime you want to sit at a table with someone else and declare yourselves the it factor on that table in regards to your people, like if you're the only one, then yes, you're absolutely right. Now let me tell you why you're right in regards to your post. You just put in there where you said, sometimes I feel like Prince Hall Masons today may be the boule. And it's not all of them. 
it's no, it is not all of them. I'm not saying all of them. I'm saying that in the Prince Hall family, in the Prince Hall family, there is an elite group of Prince Hall Masons. I'll wait. Hear me clearly. In the Prince Hall family of Masons, PHA, okay, in their uh, what they called the Council of Grand Masters, there is a group of elite Prince Hall Masons. Mm hmm. All right. Now, I know they don't uh, possess a lot of esoteric knowledge in general. It's just their fraternity uh, with its own principles within the family of masonry. Nah, mm -mm. we ain't even going to touch on no esoteric thought or nothing mm -hmm. like that. We're talking boule. OK, this is what we're saying. All right. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of them, all right? There's a lot of them. Now, I'm going to break this down. So when you open that door, what you have just said is this. To me, and what I know personally is that within the Prince Hall family, I've said it two or three times already, there is a um, upper uh, shallant, for lack of a better word, of Prince Hall Masons who meet with who uh, sit at the table with what I with mainstream Masons. I'm not talking about uh, uh, the mainstream Masons, the average Mason. I'm not talking about the average brother you see on the street, blah, blah, blah. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about those who those who 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 make things happen. Hear me clearly. In the mainstream Scottish white Mason. They have legitimately speaking 33, 33rd active members. Purple Crown. Okay, that's what they have. Grand Inspector General's 33rd. All right. They only have 33 of them. Period. Everybody else is probably a white hat or a red hat 33rd. Until one of them die off. That's what you're going to get. Now, this is from what I know. Somebody can correct me. If, if this is not true, show me the information. I'm sharing with you what I know based upon conversations I've had. White mainstream Scottish Rite Freemasons have only 33 33rds active where, you know, they meet. OK, they they do what they do. And from what from what I know, they are all they are all well off. They are all well off. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying billionaires, zillionaires. I'm saying they are all well off, okay? They are not struggling, okay? That's what I'm saying. So when I say that, I'm saying this. Recently, recently, uh, um, a group of 33rds from Prince Hall met with the 33rds of the ancient acceptor Scottish Rite from mainstream Freemason, for lack of a better word. And they said, look, we need you to support us because what we're going to say is that we're the only legitimate Scottish Rite body that is recognized by you. That's what they did. About a month, a couple of months ago, you, I mean, it's, it's all on it. It's all over YouTube in various places. They said that, that, hey, this group of 33rds and this group of 33rds are the only legi legitimate 33rds. Everybody else is, is done. That's what they said. All right. Now, I say that to say this. The, the average Mason, I mean, I'm talking Blue Lodge Mason, da-da-da. If you ain't got no money, you ain't going to sit at the table. You're not going to sit at the table, period. If you don't have the coins, you're not going to sit at the table. You may pay your $5,000 to be a 33rd, but you ain't going to be at that table, though. See, when you're at that table, you make those type of decisions, plain, plain and simple. Hold on, I got to get this call real quick. Hold on just for a second for me.
I'm sorry, I, I really had to get that phone call. Your, your first degree is esoteric. No, we're not talking about esoteric Freemason. We're talking about the boulet and, and, and Freemason and how it's connected. We're talking about the mere fact that when you claim that you're the only one and you're speaking in the totality of Freemasonry and you're trying to sit at the table with somebody else, that's some boule shit. And, and I'm just speaking from my own personal point of view. There's nothing against no one else. I'm just saying because of my conversation I've had with, with a few Masonic brothers who are pretty well off, this is the information they've shared with me. That's all I'm going to say. This is what they share with me. All right? Certain persons in our community are tapped by the boule who are considered to be affluent. They exhibit extraordinary loyalty to establish Okay, program to continue to narrative the status quo. Hmm. Well, who would be tapped? I mean, when you okay, so you said uh, certain persons of our community are tapped. Who would those certain people be? Who would they be? Would you consider a person who's well off be tapped? Would you consider them? Greetings and greetings and, oh, well, what up, Charles? How you doing? Okay, okay. So when I when I think of the boule, I, I'm telling you, my thing is, is being at the table with those who make decisions that may have influence. I said may have influence, may have influence on the community. Now, when I look at Freemasonry, and the brother opened that door earlier when he said that he considered some of Prince Hall Masons to be uh, the boule. I consider them to be that way too, based upon their actions toward other black Masons. And when you, when I say that, I'm strictly saying that when you meet with another group of Masons and decide that, hey, if, if it ain't with us, they're not considered. If it ain't with us, they're not legit. If it ain't with us, it ain't nothing happening. So you're saying I got to go through you in order to can be considered legit or whatever. This is this is what I get when they did that Scottish Rite signing of those documents a few months ago, and 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 um and and, and it clearly stated that hey this boom they they sat at the table and made that decision. I want to know how many other thirty thirds of the Prince Hall body was at that table when they when they made that decision. Was it all of the Grand Inspector Generals? Or was it a few Grand Inspector Generals? I'm just saying, I would like to know when they decided to do that, who was at the table? I'm, I'm just curious. I'm curious, George. I, want, I would like to know because when I think of that, when I see that, I'm thinking uh, just like everybody else, must be the boule because they'll put themselves in a position to speak for everybody else. Because what I'm finding is when you speak of the boule, you're speaking of those individuals that people have selected for you, not that you selected them, but they were selected to be leaders for you, all right? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this because it was blocked, all right? It says the white boule brought and knowledgeable and well-off black mason to help make financial gains and decisions controlled by the Illuminati and more. They do influence the higher their positions is in rank. Are you saying the higher the position and rank is in Freemasonry? Or are you saying the higher their position and rank is as far as uh, in society, as far as their wealth, as far as what they do, their businesses? Uh, their positions that way. Guardian of the secret knowledge. Is that what you're saying? Critical thinking. Judge politics, celebrities, and alike. Also, there are documents, evidence that show and prove many Boulay members also are Prince Hall Masons. Okay. All right. Well, we need to take a look at that just to see for ourselves, you know, and, and, and go from there. Because it, I mean, when I when I when I'm looking at this man, I just want to open the door 
and crack it open because I've heard a lot about it. You know, I've heard a lot about the boule. And it, it, I'm just trying to get a better understanding of it. And I'm, I'm trying to piece together some pieces that were shared with me regarding the boule. You know, so because I, I'm like everybody else when it comes to this. That's just the truth, you know. That's 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 me. That's me. I don't know about you, and I can't call it. So what I do is I try to share it. Look what we got, you know. Let's see. If anybody can uh, put some information in there, I certainly would appreciate it. I certainly would appreciate it. What we got? What we got? Mm. I don't see anything regarding the Boule and Prince Hall Masons or any Masons, Black Masons, for, as far as that's concerned. But however, however, we do know that those names I called out earlier were Prince Hall Masons. Thurgood Marshall, W.E. Uh, w -E B, the boys, uh, who else was there? Uh, well, I called out quite a few names. I don't want to say Martin Luther King was a Prince Hall Mason because he was he never really was initiated uh, into Freemasonry. Uh, but for those two who I just named, yes, they are they were Masons. So that is a connection. If you want to see it that way, okay, they will be considered elite. Uh, individuals in the African American community, yes, they would be considered that. Okay, let's let's just take a look at it. Uh, okay, so is it is it true that uh, uh, your boy uh, Barack, you know, would be considered boule, or what about Shaquille O'Neal? Would he be considered boule? You know, because we know we know how he said what he said about a lot of. Uh, other black athletes, we know that. Where Richard Pryor can be considered boule, you know. Uh, let me see who else. Who else? Who else? Who else? Let me see. What about Jack Johnson? Would he be considered boule? What about Omega's um, Evers? I know he was amazing. Would he be considered boule? Uh, what about? Let me see. Who else? Booker T. Washington. Would he be considered? Boule, because he was he was a mason, you know. Oh yeah, he was a mason, you know. So when you when you do that, I mean, I'm just asking a question because this conversation I've seen, I've heard, so I'm interested in it. Bill Cosby. I don't know if Bill Cosby was a mason. I heard he was. I don't know what lodge. You know, but I did hear that he was a Mason. Whether he's Boulay or not, I don't know. I don't know. But Bill, if you look at Bill uh, Cosby earlier uh, information that he was putting out earlier in his career, I don't know. This is why it's so confusing that you have a man such as Bill Cosby putting out great information as he did in the 60s and 70s and even in the 80s. And then, you know, his career has imploded because of certain allegations, you know, for sure. But as it goes back to critical thinking, we're saying judges, politicians, celebrities alike, you know. So the question is, do you think that they are meeting in secret? Because I think when I think of the Freemasons in the Boule connection, it, <laughs> I think those who are in control of what I would say the Prince Hall body or family, especially in the 33rds, I think they are gatekeepers. I really believe that. Now, somebody can say, brother, you have lost your mind. How are you, man, you crazy? Yeah, but I believe it. I believe it until I see something different. And let me tell you why I believe it. And then we can move on from there. The reason I personally believe it is because how they have positioned themselves in such a way they say, hey, look at us and look at who accept us. So we must be right. You, hey, I mean, that's my own personal opinion. It has nothing to do with anybody else. Personally, I'm just looking at it for what's in front of me. That's all. 
Let me see. Bill was drugging white women and and against rap music. Nah, that's not Boule. <laughs> oh, man, look. It wasn't that Bill was drugging them, man. All of them was doing it. Look, it wasn't that he was giving them a drug to rape them, man. Look, they was doing the thing. They was walking around with the little cocaine thing on the, on the, on the little cross. Come on, bro. They was all doing that thing back in the day, you know? So what's going on, uh, Joshua? How you doing, my brother? Hope everything is going well. Tonight, we're talking about the Masonic Boule. And what is the Boule? especially among the African-American community, because there's such a stir in regards to uh, though what we would consider elitist African-Americans finding that they may be holding a lot of progress that could be made in the African-American community, but because they are, they are delaying, because they are holding uh, the community back, they're considered to be the boule. Because they 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 sat at the door, and and this is what I'm getting. They sat at a door that has the potential of opening up a, a lot of different opportunities, but they don't do that. They only tap certain individuals that they're willing to allow in the door. And from a Masonic point of view, uh, those who are in the uh, I would say thirty thirds of the Prince Hall body. Uh, may have that type of connection to say yay or nay on some things that may be coming through masonically in regards to who set the who sits at the table and who doesn't. Just that simple. This has nothing to do with any individual or group of individuals. What I'm saying is based on what sits before me. That's all. All good, brother. Grand Lodge State got that two oh for sure <laughs> that's gonna be offline brother that's the offline <laughs> yeah 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 for sure for sure you just you said what i said earlier in regards to the grand lodge of the state and in the ancient acceptor scottish right you know that I, I will share this the from what i know and some of you may know more than me but from what i know when I think of the ancient and the Scottish Rite Freemasons and their influence upon American society, yes, mainstream has that influence. No doubt about it. Does Prince Hall Masonry have that influence? Does any other masonry amongst African American have that influence? I don't know. But what I do know on the other side of that is that those who are of the Prince Hall family, I'm talking your well-to-do Prince Hall Masons, sit at the table. And when I say well-to-do, I'm not talking about the brother who's struggling trying to pay his dues at the end of the month. I'm talking about those who are well off, who are, who are Masons amongst the Prince Hall family. Because I look, I don't mind saying it. The, my brothers of the craft who are Prince Hall Masons, I'm talking about for those, um, uh, um, I'm trying to, I want to say this right. For those Prince Hall Masons who are well off, you're not going to be sitting at the table. A person like me, I'm not going to be at the table. You know, if you, 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 that person, you didn't add, no, you ain't, you ain't at that table. You, you, you're not at that table. You're not calling up the sovereign grand commander and having that having that conversation with him. You ain't doing that, okay? That's what I'm saying. The blue, the boule is international. I could see it's making decisions about Africa. Okay. Blue Square from Florida, what's going on? <laughs> I'm the brother struggling for the dues. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, <laughs> Brother Joshua, I'm just saying, I'm just looking at this for what it is and how we consider and what do we consider to be the boule. That's that's where I'm at with that because of, of how we come across and when we talk about the boule, you know, especially in the African-American community. And a brother was telling me I should, uh, I think his name is Copley. I should go and check him out. He got quite a few videos on the boule, you know, because I didn't. 
I didn't see it from that point of view until later today when I was having a conversation with another brother. I didn't. He said, look, you got to consider this. You know, when you think of the boule, you have to consider this. The elite of the elite or the elite with the elite amongst African-Americans who are part of the Freemasons, who are part of various Greek organizations, including all of the divine nine. Those people with influences to open and close doors would be considered boule. I'm, I'm just saying, this is my understanding that I've gathered. Now, I can be wrong and somebody else can share some light. I don't mind, but this is what I've gathered. This is what I got. Let's see. Excuse me. So I don't know how long I've been on here. I just wanted to come on and just share this with you uh, based upon a conversation I've had. And, and it was an interesting conversation. It was an interesting conversation. And I, and I believe because of the information that was shared with me, I wanted to just get someone else's opinion and their thoughts. You know, that's, that's what I wanted to do. What else we got? Because when you can, masonry is esoteric thought. Okay, I read that one all right. Yeah, okay, okay. I was just going back through some of the comments. So look, I'm going to close out. But before I close out, I just want to say this. If you are ever tapped on the shoulders to be part of something bigger than yourself, where you can actually help in the progression of your community or individual, there's nothing wrong with sitting at the table. But I said it has to be in the, in the process of helping, not hindering. Hear me clearly. If you ever have the opportunity to sit at a table or create your own table, and it's going to help in the progression of your people or those in your circle, if, if that can happen, do it. Because I know if I have the, 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 the opportunity to sit at a table to help in the progression of my people or my community or those in my circle, I'm going to sit at the table and I'm going to open the door because I believe that more than myself needs to be at the table because I don't know everything. So there are people out there that know more about masonry than I probably would ever know. There are people out there who know a I mean, they just there, and you and I know that they are there. So, so to have them at the table will it will will increase me. It will help me to grow. So, who am I to close a door? Or who am I to go through a door and, and look at you knocking and not go and open the door for you? So, if you're sitting at that table, if you have an opportunity to do that, do that. Be careful though. Be careful, but you can do it. That's all I gotta say. I think it's just like an organization structure. It can be good or bad. Good with you. Good when you got guys who was who wants to make a difference and partner with the community and bad things where they're not trying to. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. I, I can see that. I can see that. Yes, Brother Charles, I'll make sure I hit you up. But as I said before, the biggest thing, wait a minute. Greetings, DJ. What's going on, Brother Craig? How you doing, man? I hope everything is going well with you and the brothers out of Louisiana. I sure do. Hope things are, man. Look, we're gonna have to chop it up, Brother Craig. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to get up in there and get up there and have a conversation, man. When well, look, I think you called me a little late, man. I'm getting ready to log off. But look, everyone, please enjoy your day. Enjoy the enjoy the uh, the festivities that are coming up. Be safe wherever you at. Please be safe. And, and you know what? Take care of those around you. You know, uh, love on them because we don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. So don't forget to tell your, your fraternal brothers, your fraternal sisters, your family members, hey, you know, I love you. Give them a hug, man. Everybody need a hug, including a thug. So let's not forget that. Whatever you do, keep your light on. Stay out the bushes. And remember this. I am your, I'm not your study guide, but I am here to help you study. That's, that's what it's really all about. So peace unto you and uh, definitely have a